So here's a little fun fact for you. Not a lot of people seem to remember it these days, but Funimation's not the first group to license and dub One Piece in English. Let me take you back to June of 2004. The Skypiea arc is drawing to its close as One Piece nears its 200th episode. By this point, its audience has a really firm grasp on what this anime is, what it's about, and what it likes to do, and how it likes to do it. And by that, I mean, yeah, everyone who watched it was firmly aware by now that this was a show with a pretty fair degree of things like blood, cleavage, death, and several scenes that are still among the darkest in the series even today. And yet, somehow nobody at 4Kids Entertainment got the memo because they had just announced that they got the rights to it and that they'd promptly be working on a dub and DVD release. But unbeknownst to 4Kids, this dub would go on to be... And you, all buck, no bite. Woof! 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 <sighs> oh my god, this is it. This is the worst dub of all time. It was... Oh god, you know, to call it a train wreck would be a massive compliment. Now, 4Kids dubs aren't usually regarded as cream of the crop dubbing, I know, but even compared to other 4Kids dubs, their sorry excuse of a One Piece dub easily stood out not just as their worst dub, but one of, in fact, quite possibly the worst anime dub I've ever seen. Let me tell you all about the 4Kids One Piece dub and what made it so bad. So first and foremost, 4Kids. For those of you who don't know, they were a prominent licensing company back in the late 90s and early 2000s. As their name implies, they dubbed anime for kids, and so generally all of their releases were heavily edited. They're most well known for dubbing some of the time's most iconic anime like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh!, so for better or for worse, they were definitely on every English-speaking anime fan's radar. In your typical 4Kids dub, you could expect to see things like mediocre acting, Americanized names and foods, and your occasional visual censorship that would usually come in the form of either awkwardly putting something on top of whatever it is they wanted to censor, or just by completely removing it. But a jelly donut here and a finger gun there do not a worse dub make. I'm not here to open up the when is making changes okay in localized media argument, because these dubs were made for young children. They weren't meant to be one-to-one -one localizations. And although your typical 4Kids dub wasn't always 100% loyal to its source material, it was still an enjoyable experience overall. But with One Piece, it was different. The root of the problem with the 4Kids One Piece dub, which I'll henceforth refer to as Dub Piece, is that even though One Piece isn't considered an adult anime in Japan, it's still more adult than the rest of the 4Kids library. Remember, the 4Kids target demographic was ages 7 to 11. And you know, you can't exactly go around showing clips like this to kids aged 7 to 11 and not expect a reaction from the parents. And that's to say nothing of the network requirements that had to be dealt with. But, you know, there were over 200 episodes available in Japan when they made this announcement, right? So 4Kids should have known that One Piece was gonna eventually turn into this. So why did they buy it in the first place? What possessed them into thinking that this was gonna be a good idea for them? Oh my god, get ready, this is hilarious. So, as an interview ANN conducted with the senior vice president of digital media at 4Kids in 2010, Mark Kirk revealed there probably wasn't any internal research done about One Piece when they were getting it, and even if there was, it was extremely bare bones. What this basically means is that it's extremely unlikely that anyone at 4Kids had watched even a single episode of One Piece at the time. Furthermore, according to Kirk, the purchase of One Piece was before his time at 4Kids, but they likely bought it in a package deal. So in a nutshell, this means that 4Kids in their hubris, bought One Piece blindly on a whim because it was part of a package deal because it was rating well in Japan and because it just looked like something that could fit in their library. You know, if they didn't go into bankruptcy a few years later, they could have just as easily have been duped into buying Higarashi under the same circumstances. 
<sighs> but honestly, this explains everything. And they must have realized the deep, dark mistake they made pretty quick. I mean, Shanks loses his arm as early as episode four. Speaking of which, by the way, yeah, surprisingly, that still happens in Dub Piece. So let's talk about some of the most frequently seen edits that they made. Well, for starters, every episode started with the now iconic sound of Yo! Don't give it up, Luffy. Don't give it up, Solo. Don't give it up, Navi. Don't give it. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. I'm not gonna play the whole opening, but you get the idea. Anyways, the devil fruits are now cursed fruits. All the alcohol, which is a lot of alcohol, is now fruit juice. Smoking is now completely gone. Sanji has a lollipop, and Captain Smoker, who's been renamed Captain Chaser, just has his teeth out all the time. Oh, and speaking of teeth, they did this at one point. But moving on, the guns are now recolored to look like toys, the marine are now the Navy, blood and cleavage are completely gone, and finally, there's a lot more puns and dad jokes. Your attitude's the pits. Cherry, peach, or apricot. So, yeah, that's just the basic list of edits you could expect to see in most episodes of Dub Piece, which is an awful lot, isn't it? If you were looking for a dub that was at least mostly, or god, even at least half loyal to its Japanese original, this was absolutely not it. And nothing made that more abundantly clear than the Arlong arc. Even now, as the series nears 900 episodes, this arc still has some of the most dramatic and memorable scenes in the whole series. So how did four kids deal with these scenes? Let's take a look. There's one scene in particular I want to focus on, the first particularly dark thing to happen in this arc. And the way four kids handled it, I think pretty well encapsulates how they'd go about the rest of the arc. It's just... Oh God, it's absolutely ridiculous. So what's going on is that Nami has to stab Usopp to prove her loyalty to Arlong. Nami, of course, doesn't want to stab Usopp because she's not loyal to Arlong at all, but she doesn't want Usopp or any of the other Straw Hats to know that. As a matter of fact, she wants them to get out of there and stay safe. So Usopp lets off a smoke bomb in an attempt to escape, but Nami finds him, puts her hand in front of him, and stabs her hand so it looks like she stabbed Usopp. Everyone thinks she's killed Usopp and is loyal to Arlong, but in actuality, Usopp is safe. This scene caught everybody totally off guard. It's incredible, it's brutal, it's a totally unexpected demonstration of her resolve. It's a fantastic scene. So then, how did four kids make this scene appropriate for kids aged 7 to 11? Let's take a look. Time for My Smoke Star! <laughs> Usopp, give me more smoke cover and let me have your rubber knife. Now! Hey, Nami, just please don't hurt me. This'll save my plan. Knife's in this pouch. Got the knife. Now follow my lead. Remember, it's your rubber knife. Better be. Do it! <laughs> now fall in the water. <sighs> A rubber knife. A rubber knife. A rubber knife that we have heard nothing about up until this point, no less. A rubber knife that cannot cut anything except all the gravity and impact that this scene originally held. I just... God, this is absurd. Well, actually, let me rephrase that a bit. It's absurd if you're looking at it as a one-to-one -one localization, since what four kids did is super different than what's actually supposed to happen. But they also couldn't just show Nami stabbing her own hand to their core audience of children. And with that in mind, yeah, they made the right call with this scene. They did what they had to do to conform with their network requirements and make it TVY7. I get it. But incidentally, do you know what? 
what else would have worked better in this situation? Doing a single Google search on One Piece or maybe just paying one of your employees a few hundreds of dollars to watch a few episodes before you spend a few thousands of dollars dubbing it. But their biggest issue didn't come from the visual sensors or the awful script that this dub was quickly becoming pretty infamous for. No, the biggest issue that would plague Dub Piece was cutting entire scenes and eventually cutting entire episodes. And how many did they cut? Well, enough to cause multiple massive plot holes. For instance, the Laboon episodes. These were two spectacular episodes of One Piece where they befriended a whale named Laboon and a guy who's gonna be pretty important down the road and his name is Crocus. But four kids cut these episodes entirely. This isn't confirmed, but if I had to take a guess, it probably has something to do with the fact that these episodes are about Luffy getting into a fight with, and then eventually befriending, a whale who's extremely scarred up because he continually charges himself toward Reverse Mountain. But the unknown reasons that they cut it aside, the funniest thing about these episodes getting cut is that in the scene where the Straw Hats are entering the Grand Line, well, originally, yeah, that's where they first run into Laboon. But for kids thought, nah, we're cutting the Laboon episode, so we shouldn't let the Straw Hats meet him at all. Whatever, we'll just censor Laboon out. So, how did four kids do that then? <laughs> we're gonna crash! <laughs> Yeah, they made him an iceberg. But beyond just being ridiculous, how is this a plot hole? Well, the mutual friendship of Laboon is the reason why Brooke joins the crew much later in the series. Had Dub Piece got to Thriller Bark, they would have had to come up with an entirely new reason for Brooke to join the crew. As if that weren't enough, they probably would have had to completely remove his backstory considering they had a pretty strict no death allowed rule. Nobody tell them about Marine Ford. But what makes this Laboon decision an especially odd one to me is that he still appears in One Piece Pirates Carnival, which was a party game on the PS2 that came out while Four Kids was still in charge of One Piece. A weird decision, but... I mean, okay, I guess. But the biggest plot holes in Dub Piece came from removing the Little Garden arc. Now, the Little Garden arc, well, it's little. It's only eight episodes. That said, it's also a pretty brutal eight episodes that I'm sure four kids didn't think would end up being very important. So that's my guess, at least, as to why this arc ended up getting cut. But I digress. These episodes were completely omitted. Why is removing this seemingly insignificant eight episodes a problem, multiple reasons. The most immediate problem they faced was that Nami gets sick right after Little Garden because she gets bit. Her getting sick in such an unusual way leads to the crew stopping on Drum Island, which of course would ultimately lead to them recruiting Chopper to their crew. But no Little Garden means that Nami couldn't have got bit, so instead they just struck her with a random illness that they call Grand Line Fever. The next problem they faced by removing Little Little Garden was Mr. Three, the guy who tried to turn them all into wax statues. Well, no Little Garden means that they never would have met. No wax statues, no grudge, etc, etc. Only problem is that Mr. Three appears again shortly after this in the Alabasta arc. Great, so now they gotta come up with an excuse for him to want to chase the Straw Hats. And the excuse they come up with? That he's been following them since Rogue Town, as it's called in Dub Piece. Oh. <laughs> But wait a minute, Mr. Three's organization hadn't even heard of the Straw Hats till the Whiskey Peak arc. Oh, I'm sorry, Misty Peak. So for him to have been following the Straw Hats since Rogue Town literally makes no sense. And finally, there's Dory and Brogy, the two giants that the Straw Hats befriend and learn about a place called Elbath. From. They only appear in this arc, but they get mentioned a lot as the series progresses because Elbaf ends up becoming a pretty important place. 
had dub piece continued, God, they would just be out of luck, plain and simple. And of course, like Laboon, despite all this, Dory and Brogy still appear in Pirates Carnival for some reason. And while dub piece continued on its course, its increasingly heavily edited course, Four Kids was starting to run into financial problems. In response, they decided to focus on their own properties rather than their licensed properties like One Piece, and ultimately they would just cancel production on One Piece in 2006. That's why Funimation was able to buy the rights to One Piece in 2007, effectively ending Dub Piece once and for all. But of course, I'm not here to tell you about the end of Four Kids, I'm here to tell you about the end of Dub Piece, and so the end of Dub Piece I shall talk about. The last episode of Dub Piece came out in September of 2007. It was their episode 104, but the Japanese episode 143, meaning that they would have ended the series on a rather dreadful note that is the large block of filler between Alabasta and Skypia. It just baffles me, they cut all these important episodes, but then they leave in this massive block of filler, really? But anyways, yeah, at this point, that's the equivalent of 39 episodes being cut. That's almost a third of the series overall at that point, and already way more than they've had to cut from any other series. If there was anyone who was actively watching Dub Piece at this point who wasn't also watching the subbed version of One Piece, to say they'd be thoroughly confused by now was an understatement. So how do you end such an unfortunate dub? Well, let's watch the last 30 seconds of the last episode for kids dubbed, shall we? You think they let us through that blockade on purpose? Yeah, when we first got here, it was way too easy. Talk about letting fate take its course. What's this? Maybe it's Wetton's mansion. You don't think this is another time warp, do you? Maybe this time the sky's just falling. Alright dudes, surf's up! And there it is. That's how Dub Piece ended. I can only interpret this as them ending the series on a passive-aggressive note by breaking their own rules and killing the Straw Hats. What a way to go out. But that's the story of Dub Piece, the first One Piece English dub that was, in fact, that bad, all because four kids thought they didn't need to watch it before they bought it. You know, they tried turning a violent and sometimes dark anime meant for older kids and teens into a family-friendly TVY7 anime for young kids, and surprise, it didn't work. There's really nothing else I can say to help you realize just how fully awful this dub was. So, to close this video off, I want to share one last clip with you. So, on 4Kids TV, they had this trivia challenge short for One Piece, and it was called Secret of the Seas. And, uh, God, here, I'll just let you watch it. Hey, everybody, I'm Luffy, the captain of the Merica. And what would a captain be without his lucky hat? So why don't you try stretching your noggin round this one? Who gave Luffy his lucky straw hat? Was it Usopp, Shanks, or Sonic? Yo! All right, dudes, surf's up. Well, nearly anyhow. Blue Water High is on later, but before all that wet stuff, it's time for some high school action of a different kind. And there's only one lesson in today's class, how to annoy your sister. Life with Derek is on next.